Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Battle Axe on the Nintendo Switch. An old school style top down hack and slash adventure. Can it stand up to its idols or would you be best here just going back and playing a few of your retro favourites? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. The story and the idea here is an evil witch of sorts sends her army south every seven years to handpick inhabitants from each township who will be subjected to a life of slavery. Basically they'll never be heard from again. Three heroes, they must step up an elf, a wizard and a marauder and they must get out there and save these citizens while taking her army down. Now I'm sure you'd agree with this, that sounds pretty cool but sadly this is all from the eShop description page and the game makes no attempt at all to tackle this as a 15-ish second cutscene to open the game. You've literally just watched it here. All she says at the end of that is, you think you can defeat me? And then at the ending of the game, there is a few dialogue boxes. But honestly, when there's no story to start things off, it's hard to really care about a resolution. And the game would have really benefited here from at least a more developed opening just to add some weight to your actions. So gameplay on this was not what I went in expecting. I actually thought this was going to be side-scrolling, somewhat similar to Golden Axe from back in the day. In fact, now I've spent time with it, this would be more similar to think Zombies Ate My Neighbours with a more fantastical kind of spin on things. The gameplay here though, it comes down to three different modes. We get Arcade Mode, which supports up to two players local. Infinite Mode, which is, as the name says, chase a high score and see how long you can like last and then obviously repeat. And then finally, on your first completion, you will also unlock New Game Plus. This dials up the difficulty. It modifies the boss encounters very slightly and then it mirrors the screen horizontally. Now for those curious too, there is no online support here, which is really disappointing honestly i think this would have been a blast with two players online the game though every mode it takes place across four different locations and the main story is just that four levels with four boss moments and you can select between two difficulty options that is easy or hard now if you didn't guess already this is not the longest of games my slowest complete run that was right around 30 minutes my quickest around 24. now in true old school fashion though you will get a number of lives for each run once you die there is no continues it's game over and back to the main menu the core combat though, as short as it may be, is fun at least. The isometric perspective feels kind of refreshing. We've seen a lot of side scrollers recently. And then the three warriors, they each come with their own skill set. The dwarf has like this fire attack, the wizard a spell, and the marauder, my favorite that is, who had dual blades. The overall combat basically though comes down to a melee attack, a shoot, and an ability. The most unique part of combat though, it's gotta be that combat has a stamina system. That is the red bar in the top left of the screen next to my character's portrait. Your main attack is completely free, but everything else comes at a cost with a cooldown. It's not overly difficult, but I did think it was still a nice touch. Overall though, the formula never changes. You traverse the levels, you battle your foes, you take down these pyramid-like kind of power sources. They, they power up these force fields that allow you to progress the level. And then occasionally you'll be saving civilians. The number of civilians for each level is displayed in the lower left of the screen. Finally then, you will take on a bus moment. They are fun the first few times, but by that third or fourth attempt, they never really change and they are relatively simple. The only other thing really there, you might come across a kind of like treasure chest which can contain something like a power-up health or cash which can be spent with a merchant and enemies they not only kind of run up your high score but also drop kind too. Beat Arcade though you'll spend some time with infinite mode maybe you'll overcome new game plus and then you do start to kind of quickly realize it's kind of lacking on content. The only real longevity here is the high score leaderboard to chase and a few built-in achievements and even that leaderboard it's offline only, so you're literally competing against yourself. That's not even honestly the problems with this one though. Let's take a look at that now. The combat is good, but it could still do with some more variety. I wish this one had kind of like timed weapons you could pick up. The game just never changes. Everything is always in the exact same place. The only difference, the chest content, that kind of changes occasionally, but why not at least like move the civilian placements? Why not even have a few varieties of each map maybe? My favorite complaint of them all then, the merchant between levels. Very cool idea, but the game gives you absolutely no explanation of what each item does. 
Now I'm sure you can figure this out, you know, equip it, try it, see what happens. You know, a few of them are really obvious, well, like the chicken that gives you health, but there's no way you should be guessing here. Like the shield looking one and the S kind, I still have no idea what they actually do because the shields seem to honestly do nothing. And my guess is the S is more kinds dropped by enemies maybe, but they appear in smaller squares underneath your health bar and those squares were never explained to me. Now before you tell me in the comments it's just old school and old school didn't tell us everything and I agree to a certain extent. I've had this argument before though on other games. The difference with old school is they came with an instruction book and I know that because I would study them on the way home. You know just excited to play and in them they told me absolutely everything. Here we do not get that luxury. There's no menu option here, no digital instruction book. This just kind of feels like they've increased the difficulty but in this kind of horrible and almost cheap way. At that as well, I'm still not done with issues here, the big one now, the game seems to have a bug in its current build and the third level occasionally goes kind of all over the place with its frame rate. It doesn't appear to be a huge drop when you're kind of looking at the video in the background right now, but this is the third of fourth levels and I got crushed with them. The game almost feeling like it was freezing slightly and the input lag increased and my enemies took complete advantage. It happened maybe once every five runs or so, so not frequent, but still, you know, like frequent enough to be frustrating. As you know, the second it starts to happen, it's basically instantly game over and there's nothing you can do about it. For gameplay, look, I was excited going in on this one, but I'm wrapping things up. I can't help but just feel disappointed. Not only is it lacking in content, but the content we do get here has a fair few issues as well that need to be resolved. It also really, as a game, just needs to be built upon as it stands because you can see everything it has to offer in just a few hours. So graphics and I like them a lot, the isometric pixel style is something I've always enjoyed and the artist behind this one has a solid selection of games under his belt, think Seno Crisis, Shakedown Hawaii, Ashante and the Pirate's Curse, his expertise they definitely show, the details fantastic, each location feels unique and while they are basic I did like the animations as well, especially those of the boss moments and it is also like all consistent throughout from the old school menus to the opening cutscene and yeah I have very few complaints here it's bright it's vivid it feels old school exactly what i wanted i mean perhaps the only thing i would say the character portraits top left corner are a little too pixelated for me and i wish i could see a little more detail in them but that's really kind of a cosmetic thing at most and not really an issue at all it's nothing that i you know put against the game Audio then also very good, the soundtrack I really liked as it goes for a few different tempos and styles while embracing the game's influences. The composer has worked on the likes of Mega Man though and Shovel Knight in the past, so I kind of expected that quality and again they absolutely delivered. I wish there was a little bit more in here but it makes sense, you know, four levels doesn't really demand a ton of music. And then finally the vice acting is really bad but in the best possible way and really there's only like three characters here who talk, they have like one line each but it all kind of built into the charm of the style and the era it was aiming for like the announcer who screams battle axe on the main menu. Overall with this one, look, I think it's clear from gameplay I was disappointed and that's a shame because the idea I like a lot, the isometric setup, love it. Don't see it all that often and then the graphics, the music, just everything I wanted. It's just a lack of content and variety absolutely lets this one down and then on top of all that things like no online support, no stage changes. The best way to describe it is it's kind of very bare bones and then it's even let down further by technical issues like the third level frame rate that just occurs occasionally. One thing I rarely talk about as well then pricing here. This is coming in retailing on the eShop at like 30 bucks in the US, 25 quid in the UK, 30 euros and so on. That's a lot of cash for a game that gives you very little reason to come back. And for me, this one just needed a whole lot more development time. And that is a shame because this was actually a very successful Kickstarter. And I think those that got behind the game probably deserved a little bit more for their cash. Now, I'm not saying you won't have fun when it works. It is a good time, absolutely. But it needs some patches. It needs some extra content. And I think more than anything, it needs a price drop. A below average 4 out of 10 from me. Fix the third level issue. It would be probably a very average 5 out of 10. And maybe still me suggesting you've got to wait on a sale at least first. 
Will you be adding this one to your collection though? Does the content do enough for you that you're willing to part with that cash and kind of forgive its issues? No doubt if you love your retro, this one will be tempting. With that though, a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner helps more than you know so thank you all so much if you do want to check that out for yourself i have linked it in the video description down below then hit subscribe if you love the switch as much as we all do here join our growing family and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone <laughs>